presentation. And this time we have PhD forum with four presentation. And this time uh, Professor Povitra Palchavududis will uh, be the chairperson of this session. Uh, I'd like to welcome uh, Professor Palchavududhuri on stage and continue this session. Over to you, sir. So next session uh, provides us the ongoing session, ongoing research session, which includes five presentations. In my lot, there are five presentations. In the sequence, the next presentation titled Chaos and Isomorphism in Cellular Automata will be presented by Vicky Vikrant. I request Vicky Vikrant to present the, his research presentations. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the post lunch session. Uh, my PhD forum uh, title is Chaos and Isomorphism in Cellular Automata. I welcome you all and I'm thankful to my supervisor and I am I welcome to uh, I welcome you all and thankful to my supervisor, Dr. Kamalika Bhattacharji, ma'am. And I also thankful to the ASCAT committees. So uh, let's start with the presentation. So uh, chaos and isomorphism in cellular automata, despite of this, uh, chaos is an utter disruption. We can see that the sensitivity of the, uh, of the system with the small tiny changes in the system, it, it will go up till the very chaotic pattern. It, and despite of this chaos, isomorphism is also as a characterization of this cellular automata. So uh, let's start with the presentation. My name is Vicky Vikrant, pursuing PhD from NIT Trishrapalli camp, Trishrapalli. So uh, as we all are with the same background of cellular automata, so no need to uh, just define the cellular automata. So, um, Basically, uh, chaos leads with the uh, with the randomness. So uh, we have uh, cellular automata based technology like uh, these are some classes classes. Uh, these are some classes uh, of the P, uh, PRNGs like uh, L LCG based and F LFSR based and cellular automata based. Basically, uh, we are using uh, we are using cellular automata based technology to analyze our chaotic behavior. So before going into the uh, our problem statement, uh, uh, let's talk about what is the problem inside this cellular automata based uh, uh, PRNGs. So if you are changing the number of states, we can get the suitable CA, CA based uh, PRNGs. But the difficulty is while increasing the number of his states it will automatically increase the let's take an example three neighborhood 10 states ca rule to, uh, that will give around 1000 neighborhood combinations so it's very difficult to uh, represent using the pen and paper so for that we have the some simplified form of algorithm which is uh, already published in the decimal cellular automata uh, c and uh, this uh, exhausting searching of the CA rules, it's very, uh, uh, we, we have just uh, find some greedy approach to uh, for the, this exhaustive searching of the CA. So this is uh, the already published work uh, 
in the decimals as uh, decimal cellular automata so our target is to reduce the search space complexity of the rules along with we are analyzing with the z and p chaotic parameters yeah so why we are considering the first degree cellular automata yeah so uh, we can see that in this uh, existing work that our uh, our cellular automata based P, uh, prngs will give uh, will, will test uh, based on this matri matrix die hard test and ist these are the random analysis uh, that will gives the randomness properties so uh, this is actually that this this work is extended work for first degree cellular automata we can see that in the first degree cellular automata these uh, these are comparatively we can see that at die hard test u01 nist it will pass around all the test beds so it is very comparable with the uh, with the mt and sfmt series you can see that over here so we will choose the first degree cellular automata to represent to represent our uh, uh, our uh, like to represent our work it's not working sometimes sir so basically uh, this is the first degree cellular automata equation uh, this is uh, known as first degree why because it has the degree one so we can see that this is the formal definition of the first degree cellular automata we can uh, we can have the constant value c0 c1 c2 c3 and based on these uh, constant value we can depict the parameters so we are uh, in our work we are concentrating over the only three neighborhood we can change the neighborhood uh, as per the requirement but it's it's become very difficult so we'll check out with the three neighborhood condition so yes sir uh, maybe i'm wrong x y z x y x z still there uh, uh, this is a first degree x y I wanted to mean a uh, second degree. No, no. It's a sir, first degree equation. First degree means power is one. Always. Power is one, yes, sir. That's all. But x y, there are two. Yes, yes sir. Yes, yes, sir. So basically, we are taking this constant as a parameter. So based on these parameter, we can depict the rules. So uh, basically, we are developing the greedy solution to, to search uh, the best chaotic rules based on these parameters. So uh, we are basically uh, taking the essential conditions like inform flow of information, non-trivial fixed point attractor, and tri trivial configurations. And we are using um, the two, two chaotic parameter in our, tech, uh, in our methodology to analyze whether this, uh, uh, the selected uh, rules are chaotic or not. So using this space-time diagram, we, uh, we are going to uh, verify that these this, uh, parameters are having the uh, chaos or not so we uh, present the first degree rules uh, rules for the uh, study of uh, chaos in the cellular automata so uh, this two chaotic parameter already uh, have been uh, worked by supriti ma'am that is uh, that she explored all these parameters in the first session so we will directly go to the parameter analysis part only. So uh, before that, we are uh, checking the linearity and non-linearity in, uh, uh, in this our uh, uh, first degree CA. So if the condition, this condition is satisfied, then we can say that these are the, li uh, the, these are the linear rule. Otherwise, we can say that these are the non-linear rule. But we, uh, we are going to take the only 
non linear for a chaotic analysis because it gives the more uh, it it gives the cryptographically secu uh, security so we'll ch we'll check out for the that only so let's take an example uh, how will uh, ECA 90s will uh, work uh, based on these RMTs we can depict from the 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 1 so from that we can uh, we can clearly say that these are linear or not linear based on these conditions. if c0 c1 c2 c3 c6 c7 is zero then we the, we can say that these uh, these rules are linear and otherwise uh, these are non linear so we can see that uh, some some rules are here linear and non linear so uh, uh, i already to, uh, we we talked about that uh, we have the selection selection criteria of how we are choosing our chaotic parameters based on these uh, selection criteria flow of information balancedness non linearity large cycle length chaotic parameters z and p parameters and non trivial fixed point attractor less than the num uh, if if uh, the less than the number of fixed point attractor we have the large cycle length so if we have the large cycle length then the system will never uh, like it will converge after uh, after so many iteration we can say so as as per the condition we have to uh, we we will ignore this uh, uh, the fixed point in the non reachable trivial configuration again we we are uh, we we will try to uh, to diverge our system so with the small tiny addition we can uh, we can we can uh, we cannot predict our system that is desirable for the prng as again so we'll uh, go to the next slide that chaotic parameters we are using again uh, uh, again the the jet parameter which is proposed by andrew wench in 1998 that this is a uh, that this he shows that this this is the sufficient condition for the chaotic analysis but again the p parameter has been introduced that is gives the more accurate result than the z parameter because it has the information propagation and information cooking inside that we have we have the condi uh, we found that some conditions that if we we are getting the l set values 0 0.75 uh, if you are uh, we are getting the value greater than uh, is equal to 0 0.75 in the let left set and in the right set, if you are getting the value 0 0.5, then we can say that these are, let's uh, take some example. These are the experimental result that I'm showing that these are the selected rules uh, using this P parameter. We are taking the D2 to D, uh, D10 that we are getting these values of this L set and R set. Inside this, we can see that these parameters having the constant result. So we'll discard this uh, parameter because it will always, sometimes it, 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 will, it, can, it can be predictable. So it never gives the chaotic result. So uh, uh, we, uh, now we will uh, analyze with the space time diagram that this chaotic analysis with the respect of D, how the, how the uh, chaos uh, will, uh, will give so, uh, so many chaotic results using this space time diagram initially we are taking uh, uh, the cell length is 101 with the initial configuration of this so we'll uh, we'll predict this uh, rule using this space time diagram we can see that at the d2 it will uh, give some uh, fixed point and it at d3 sometimes it gives the chaos sometimes it will give the same constant result again in d4 so will will not uh, after while increasing the number of d it sometimes gives the chaotic result sometimes it it will not give the chaotic results and again we if you are checking this this on this parameter so again we are having this uh, result at d2 d till d10 so while increasing again the same uh, same result so uh, yeah so we again uh, analyzing with the exhaustive searching of this chaotic parameters will find out uh, like uh, 
like some uh, for the different d we can uh, we can uh, give uh, we can take the and randomness with uh, with the decree with the with uh, with the decrees of d will uh, uh, it can it can uh, strengthen our claim that uh, uh, while increasing the number of d in this diagram we can see that every time it will gives the chaotic result with the small change in this initial configurations so this is the parameter rule for this and then this and again we we just cross checking with this parameters whether these are giving the chaotic chaotic result or not so basically uh, we can see that at d2 to d3 d4 we using this p param uh, p parameter we can see that this gives the value greater than 0.752 like this this will not give the zero uh, like we can see this is the parameter this is the parameter so we'll compare with this sorry this we'll compare with this so it, it will gives uh, some uh, some relatable uh, values with this chaotic parameter sorry sir okay so these are some experimental results that we'll get from the uh, three state, four state, and five state. Again, the uh, my second problem in uh, in isomorphism in cellular automata. So basically, we again introduce some properties and some techniques. How can we get the esteric esteric uh, session? I was uh, I was delivered this. Uh, how we'll get the isomorphism in cellular automata? Basically, we are using the uh, configuration transition diagram as a characterization tool. So these are the first property that uh, we are checking in the reversible and irreversible nature. So uh, we have uh, like we will take the one example quickly that if you are taking this uh, this non-uniform CAs, we'll get the same cycle length with the same cycle length. This is basically this is a uh, reversible uh, reversible nature of this uh, uh, non uniform ca so we'll get the same number of cyclic and uh, the self replicating uh, transition so we'll we'll see uh, we, we can say that these are isomorphic to each other in the reversible nature so again we have some more properties using this analysis for the cell uh, automata so again in the reversible nature we also again sorry so again, we are getting the same uh, isomorphic result. These are the some selected, uh, 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 like, uh, selected uh, like uh, non-uniform uh, CAs. And again, we, again, uh, uh, we synthesize our CA that how we'll get the CAs uh, in a uh, like uh, uh, based on two techniques. We can synthesize our CA and we'll get the so many uh, isomorphic CA. So quickly, I will finish this. So ba basically, we are permutating the value. Let's take an example. Let's take an example like A, B, C, D. We are just permutating this value, 3 to position, C, D to D, C, just, uh, just interchanging this value. So we'll get, uh, while, while transition transition from 0 to 15, we can, uh, we can again, if you are changing this position, we'll get the same result. Again, here we can, ch uh, if we change the value, it will give some different result. So the transition will be changed, but the, the, uh, the, there is some uh, equivalence relation, be equivalence relation will uh, satisfy these properties. So that's why we are getting the same isomorphic result. So quickly we'll go through with this. So we'll get the same uh, isomorphic graph, sorry, isomorphic graph in the state exchange method and second method is state map basically we are doing the complementation we are uh, these are the formal definition of this and we are just basically uh, just if you are taking the b position to complement it so we are just changing the b complement and we are getting this result so just changing the one bit position the whole configure whole configuration has been changed so based on that, we are getting again the same isomorphic result. Sorry. Uh, same isomorphic result. So uh, here's some ex experimental result with the Lopez classification. We, uh, Lopez classification uh, will be only the uh, uh, uniform CAs. And we tested out with the non-uniform CAs with the same uniform, uh, like 
so uniform and uh, non uniform both these are the state map result uh, sample result basically and uh, these are the periodic uh, periodic boundary condition with the lopez classification so again we are uh, getting the permutation result like ex uh, state exchange method using this we can get the uh, 24 uh, isomorphic results so this uh, in the first problem statement we can i can conclude that uh, our 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 system will work for the d state and n neighborhood and we are using this jnp parameter to uh, to for the chaotic analysis and uh, we are using the space time diagram to analyze our the system is chaotic or not and our future work will be convergence in ca uh, in the first degree cellular automata we are working on it and exploring those uh, uh, the future work may be the higher dimensional and hybrid system and we can compute the model in the second uh, conclusion that we we have uh, get we have uh, synthesized our ca using this permutation and uh, permutation and state map function so we'll get the d, d factorial to the power n minus one is isomorphic results this is very complex we can see in the some appendix uh, i have included some appendix so this future work will be interesting problem in the find the exact count of the uh, partitioning in the cas so i will uh, very much thankful to professor sukanta sir and uh, dr uh, sukanya ma'am for mentoring this uh, isomorphic work in the summary school so here are some references so uh, I also include some experimental result using the six state, seven state, eight state in the first degree cellular automata. Again, in the second uh, problem statement, we have the sam some sample result of isomorphic with the same with the uh, five cell length and four neighborhood condition and the null boundary condition. Again, in the periodic boundary condition, and uh, this again six cell length with the four neighborhood under null boundary condition. It will uh, goes like exponential. So I'll stop at the uh, uh, eight cell length under the same periodic and null boundary condition it gives the huge uh, to the power x complexity so we'll stop here thank you please please go back to uh, two problem areas just now uh, four five slides back first problem area what you have concluded first, yeah. first yes problem statement so here, my observation says that from space-time diagram, you are trying to conclude something. We are verifying actually with the space-time diagram whether it is giving the chaotic result or not. Is there any theoretical resu results associated with this? Uh, sir, with the Z and P parameter, we are analyzing information, propagation and information. Any theorems or any theoretical results associated with this? Uh, Actually, uh, yeah, sir, uh, with the equation, first degree equation, we are uh, we are analyzing with the P, I already told that P and Z, uh, P and Z parameters. Along with that, the, we are generating uh, the exhaustive search of the, uh, is using the space time diagram, exhaustive search. There is no, I think, uh, I didn't check out the, the theoretical analysis, like with the, with, the, with the first degree equation, we just analyzed equation. The first degree equation. Okay, in the second part, in the second part in irreversible CS, okay, you are constructing the uh, isomorphisms, right? So, what are the practical uses of these isomorphisms? Uh, sir, we can. Uh, what are the practical u usefulness? Sir, we can analyze the some uh, complex patterns in the CS that isom uh, irreversible CS. The isomorphisms in two different uh, 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 rule setups. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is the benefit you are gaining? So, we can uh, we can we can classify actually. We can classify. We can uh, we can do like the Wolfram classification. They work on the ECS 256 like that. We can also classify our uh, non-uniform series. Also, have you uh, done it exhaustively? Uh, of, of, Yes, sir. Actually, uh, I already I already showed that. You have shown, but uh, yeah. for all kinds of non-uniforms, yes, non-linear. Sir, sir yeah. these uh, these are the uh, these are the patterns like 30, 30, 30 like that. The, the uniform and uh, sorry. I'm saying non-uniform, non-linear. Yes. Exhaustively, 
it's a big number i said it's very complex to complex and big number yes total sir the number is very big yes sir total number of combinations yes sir it is not exhaustive right uh, you have not done exhaustively not done exhaustively but just uh, taking uh, taking the uni uh, some we we manually we check with the four lengths ca yeah, and uh, again we are analyzing with the with the uh, with the uh, codes we can these are the code based generation so we are just uh, using the complement and uh, st state mapping and state exchange method we just getting it out like say, with the synthesis only we are just changing the bits and we are exchanging the bits only we are getting the isomorphic result the, because the here exists the equivalence relation because of that we are getting this result okay uh I, I invite other questions, offline questions. Yes. Uh, Vicky, I have a small comment, especially regarding the experimental results. Uh, so uh, one point is if you want to find out uh, the isomorphic cell automata, be it uniform, be it non-uniform, I believe that experimental result will not help much because what Sarah was asking, you know, you have taken only six lengths, what will happen for seven lengths? And it's not possible to deal, you know, exhaustively. It's not possible. So proper theoretical, you know, framework should be developed if you want to have really that isomorphic say. It may so happen that, okay, I'm not getting all the isomorphic say, we have some limitation, but that should be done from theoretical point of view. Experimental one, you know, uh, I mean, may not uh, work much, is the first, uh, first comment. And one good suggestion can be that what I was saying with the application that you should have to search. There may be some good applications, you know, in several domains, you should, you should find out. Thank you. Any, uh, any other questions offline or online, please? Offline? Yes. Uh, actually, uh, you, I have missed it that uh, you have considered uh, evaluation following uh, diehard in diehard platform. So then, uh, what uh, was the length of the CA? Sir, can you repeat the question? See, in diehard, using diehard, you have tested that whether it is uh, basically it is showing randomness, etc. Yes. So then, uh, what was the size of the CA? So we we are checking with the seed value. Seed value, I'll, I'll show you. In die hard, you need uh, you know, a large volume of data to to conclude that it is your uh, your patterns past ten. Uh, what is called 10 parameters or 15 parameters. Yes, sir. So you have to, your input will be a large volume of data. Okay. So not less than 20 MB. So if your CA length is 4, 5, 6, then uh, the result you are getting, it will be, it will be not true for N equal to 100. So it's have you got my problem, my issue? It, it is actually extended work of this first degree cell automata. So it already has been published in the, it is already has been published that uh, this die hard test and, and this statistical analysis. So uh, based on we are, we are, we are searching exhaustively for the rule based chaotic parameters. Again, I repeat that what is the size of the CA you considered? 51. So how much volume of data you created? The data means that the different states or your in your terms, it is called configurations. Okay. So what was the volume? So input to die hard. What is the volume of the input? Um, uh, I, I, I recall that the value volume of the data is terms around uh, while increasing the number of seats and uh, these values, we are getting uh, like very large number. Like data will be terms around 32 GB in dot bin file. 
we are just tested out with that uh, file 32 gb then 64 gb then it goes exponentially sir so in the event there is no other question so i call it the uh, uh, thank you vicky uh, so your presentation is over please accept this on behalf of ascot <laughs> So next presentation is entitled Implementation of CBIR for Medical Images Using Cellular Automata, Barik Rupostri will be the presenter, please. Good afternoon, all. Uh, myself, Rupostri Barik, uh, here to uh, discuss on my PhD uh, ongoing work. So today, nowadays, we know that all uh, medical image processing is a thirst research area. Uh, analyzing the uh, different imaging modalities, it is uh, very much required to uh, diagnose and detect the disease properly. That's why I have planned for this uh, implementation of CBIR, uh, content-based uh, image retrieval for a medical image uh, using uh, cellular automata. So basically, uh, we know that uh, for uh, medical, uh, that it, it will be very much helpful for the uh, physicians also, that uh, we know that uh, diagnosing and detecting uh, uh, that disease uh, for, for a particular or for different diseases, it is uh, time consuming and uh, expertise are required uh, for these purposes. So we have tried here to make it automated so that easily uh, the diagnosis can be done and the disease can be detected. So for primarily for this task, we need to make a, Im a huge image data set, image set. So from where uh, the, what will be my query image, matching that with uh, my existing data set, it can predict that what kind of disease it is. So on uh, focusing of that, uh, so here, <clears throat> We have, uh, first we need to, for performing this uh, entire image set, we have performed the image classification. We are working on the image classification and for image classification, we know that there are similar kind of images will be there. So for performing uh, with some uh, similar types of uh, salient features will be there. So considering that what we have considered that image segmentation we have performed as so one of the feature for this, uh, uh, for this salient, uh, for this criteria. So uh, we know that uh, cellular automata uh, is uh, uh, very much uh, one mathematical tool which can uh, provide us, uh, it helps us to remove the noise as well as it uh, produce a good output in case of image also. So uh, we know that, uh, so this is basically the CBIR structure of CBIR where uh, the images are being considered. And uh, from th those images, we have extracted the features and uh, one database will be uh, maintained for that, uh, considering those image features. And then whatever will be the query image that will be from that the feature will be extracted as well as, and then uh, that feature, uh, will be mapped with the existing database so that if it is matching, it will predict or it will detect that what kind of disease it is. This is the basic outline of the task. So, and here we have considered the features as the color, shape, and the texture. 
so we, all we know that cellular automata is uh, uh, that it is uh, we can be considered it it is as a grid of cells also and various dimensions of cellular uh, cellular automata is available so as i am working with the digital images so i have preferred 2d ca for uh, further processing here are some of the literature reviews I have done and uh, uh, some of the observations I have found there. Uh, like um, basic, here I have considered mostly uh, the image segmentation I have applied for the cancer detection mainly. So there, uh, first uh, for the segmentation, we know that segmentation, age detection can be a part of the segmentation or region growing, uh, region margin splitting. These are the uh, techniques of the se uh, segmentation. So. <coughs> Sorry. So here what we have done that for primarily for image segmentation, uh, for image segmentation that uh, one task I have been chosen as the uh, chosen as the age detection. So using the neighborhood concept of the cellular automata, I have performed the age detection and gradually I have moved to the image segmentation as well as. So here in uh, considering the image segmentation, the if I define with the CA, that here I have considered the two dimension CA and the state values of the uh, of it can be 0 to 255 as I have considered the grayscale image. And uh, here I have considered uh, applying the moon neighborhood concept i have done this and transition rules i have applied that uh, considering one core cell or reference cell uh, it the value of the state will remain same if the adjacent of this uh, uh, this state of this uh, neighbor the adjacent neighbor value and the core cell value difference is uh, greater than the threshold then it will remain same otherwise it will be convert it will be replaced with zero so this is a uh, uh, so <coughs> Here is, the, here is the output we, what we get. That here I have considered one brain tumor image as well as grown fracture. So, so here we can see that here is the mass development in the brain, brain area. And, and these are the comparison that using the Sobel mechanism, Sobel edge detector, we found this as well as for pre we get this, and uh, for canning we got this, but uh, using my uh, proposed cellular automata approach, we got the this mass area very clearly. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> so further moving to the cancer detection, here I have mainly chosen the breast cancer, <coughs> brain tumor, and the lung cancer also. So here the rule I have defined as 2DC, of course, I have used, and the, again, applying the more concept, I got this. And here is the output <coughs> that this is the, uh, uh, for this comparison, I have compared it with the famous watershed uh, transformation technique. So this is the brain CT. Here we can see the mass of abnormal uh, sales growth is being developed. And uh, uh, using the uh, watershed, we got this output. And using the cellular automata based approach, we got this one. Wherever for the breast cancer, we consider this. This is the lump area. And using watershed, we got this output. Whereas using the proposed cellular automata based approach, we got this one. Yes, one. Previous also. So, may uh, in. Can you recollect what is the name of the rule? It is two-dimensional cellular automata you are using. Yes, sir. There is a naming system in that 2D system. So what could be the rule number sir. or sequence of rules? Yes, sir. actually here I have applied the neighborhood concept, not the exact rule number I have applied. But the neighborhood concept I have applied that I have performed the operations on neighborhood pixels. Uh, uh, yes. 2D rule comprises. <coughs> 2D, any 2D CR rule comprises like that. Yes, sir. Huh? My, uh, any cell covered by adjacent eight, other, eight other adjacent rules. Yes, sir. Depending on the eight rules, uh, the, the next evolution takes place. Yes, sir. So, what are the sequence of rules? Can you name the CA rules? Uh, are you asking? For, for this uh, uh, CA segmentation, for the segmentation purpose, for detection of cancer, or for any other purpose? Uh, 
Uh, sir, uh, are you asking about the rule number that rule which particular number. rule number I have yes. used? Yes. Sir, rule uh, 25 there I have used once. Rule, rule 25, yes. Uh, so for... what, how does it look like? Rule 25, can you show me? No, sir, that I have not given here. Actually, for at that time, <coughs> I have considered that, that uh, the concept of that what are the pattern or the approach of the rule 25 that we have, we have used here. And then further, the neighborhood concept applying that rule. Uh, I got this results. No, I'm not convinced about the rule number 25. You must do it. <coughs> okay, please go ahead. But uh, I wanted to, I would like to know from you the particular rule number or set of rules for detecting something. Okay. Yes, sir. Actually, depending on the images, the rules are working properly. When I mean to say that for all the images, I'm not getting the same result, applying the same rule. So, yes, sir. CA rules. Yes, sir. Though you have to identify those CA rules. Okay. Or sequence of rules. Okay, sir. Next time I will be putting those things also. So further, uh, so uh, prolonging or extending the concept of this, uh, what I have done is uh, that uh, as we know that nowadays uh, every system uh, is to be automated for easy detection and prediction as well as to uh, save the time. So extending this concept, uh, what I have further that done that <clears throat> that I have uh, incorporated this with the CNN and ANN approach and uh, tried to detect this uh, error, uh, detect this disease uh, auto automatically. So further work was my on uh, COVID-19 detection uh, that there I have uh, almost this much part is similar to my previous work. And then also I have done this that first of all, I have considered my approach and transformed all the images that uh, chest x-ray, etc. I have converted it into the uh, applying my uh, segmentation technique. I have made one new image set. And, and on that image set, I have performed this CNN in this I have performed to make it automated detection. <coughs> so here is the uh, for the uh, normal chest X-ray, and this, this, these are the result for the COVID-19 X-ray. So this part is the original uh, original images, and this part are the, uh, the transform images uh, uh, using my uh, proposed uh, segmentation technique. And further, for the cancer works also, I have applied this, uh, done this, that uh, with this segmentation technique, with uh, this proposed segmentation technique, I got for brain tumor image set and for breast cancer image set, I got accuracy of 84.615%. And for breast cancer also, I got 81.269%. Uh, Whereas without applying the image segmentation, ap uh, applying the VGG, uh, VGG, there I got the accuracy of 76.923% and 79.365%. As well as in case of inception also, I got this much accuracy and data loss. And uh, yes, it is for ResNet, it is not, uh, it is not uh, so much uh, favorable like uh, VGG and inception. Uh, so uh, what I have done that, uh, that yes, uh, here the width segmentation, uh, we can observe that uh, first the image set has been created, new image set has been created, applying this segmentation technique. And there we got a better result than the if we are getting the accuracy without applying this uh, segmentation technique. So my further work is uh, basically that uh, as we are uh, considering this segmentation as a part of feature extraction, so my next part of uh, work is that I'm on I'm working on that image classification that where how as many uh, as much possible features we can be extracting from this medical images. So uh, considering that uh, considering those features that similar uh, matching the similarity index, we will be creating the new data set image set from where uh, that what will be the query images will be captured uh, will be coming that will be matched with that database and with if it is giving us the correct result, if it, the similarity index is uh, good, then we can say that this uh, this is that uh, this particular disease. That's all from my end and we are here are some references. Thank you, Ruposri. So is there any other comments or questions from uh, offline or online? Yes, please. Good afternoon, ma'am. Uh, I have a um, uh, single question. Uh, you have shown us the COVID-19 X-ray images. 
so as we all know covid 19 is uh, the, the effect of covid 19 is in in the body in in the form of an image is no no different than a normal influenza then how we can uh, detect it just by seeing an image whether this is an influenza of different type or it is covid 19 for hello actually for that what we have here i have just shown that uh, that covid 19 x ray uh, along with this this uh, technique has been applied for the normal pneumonia as well as for normal cis x ray or any any kind of other uh, lung diseases uh, there also we have applied this so we are getting the image set of those particular diseases over there also and the parameters for that and this covid 19 are not so much similar so we are trained the system we have trained the system so that that for pneumonia it will detect that it is uh, not exactly the covid 19 or pneumonia this kind of situation will be done also what terms uh, in what terms uh, normal uh, chest um, any chest x ray of uh, which is the patient if the patient is get infected with another kind of influenza and uh, the other is covid 19 in what terms they are different uh actually so much i have not studied on this uh, that uh, the differences between the specific uh, diseases but uh, here my, my task was that i have taken the data image set from the kaggle uh, on uh, covid 19 as well as for pneumonia and normal chest x ray or any kind of uh, just uh, normal lung diseases so there i have applied and uh, the accuracy or the disease already it will be told that uh, actually there i am making the set of pneumonia and no pneumonia as well as for covid and no no uh, covid this kind of data set uh, image set already are creating na? so from there uh, finding out the similarity index it is giving us that whether it is covid or not thank you thank you yes so please in case of brain tumor detection uh, if we use vgg 16 or vgg 19 it's uh, give us very good result but why i am using 2d cellular automata is it computationally effective ma'am more hello hello actually 2d ca i am using because of just uh, digital image are being represented with 2d matrix so here the neighborhood operations or any kind of operations to be performed with the pixels is uh, much easier if we i prefer the 2d ca that's why only I go on for the two DC. Computationally, if uh, of course, computation uh, here I have. So I am asking that computation question. time is of course better than the other uh, methodology. Here I already have shown you that uh, edge detection technique, uh, like uh, the conventional edge detection techniques, Sobel Previd, that also has that been compared with this. So computational time is definitely better in uh, C. and moreover uh, the uh, already we have seen that continuity of the a detected aga so these are very much prominent in C in case of c instead of that sobel previt or uh, cadmius any other question uh, what is the accuracy of your model uh, for my model uh, in this case here uh, for brain tumor i have got with this segmentation i got 84.615% and uh, for breast cancer i got 81.265% this much accuracy i got applying this uh, later i will be working on much larger image set maybe then i can get uh, much more better accuracy whereas without the segmentation technique i have seen that for brain tumor for the same data set i i have seen that um, 876.92 to 23% is the accuracy for this compared with the existing mldl techniques because i believe 84% is quite low less than 90% is quite low actually yes yes actually uh, that for this much uh, this comparison i have shown that is on basis of the same data set for the same data set that vgg uh, uh, the same data set i have just simply applied to the vgg there i got this accuracy but while i have transformed with my technique the entire image set i have transformed to uh, using this segmentation technique and made a new data set and for that data set i have applied vgg resnet these things so there i got better accuracy than the uh, than the normal that is my uh, point of work here kaggle kaggle yes yes uh 
uh, what will be the dimension of the ca dimension means a 2d na so dimension is 2 but uh, the if you consider the x and y so matrix size particular size depends on the uh, what is called uh, x ray report size because in some uh, laboratory uh, you will be getting small size okay in some other places you will be getting a large size plate uh, large size of what sir so x ray plate Okay, so okay. sir, actually these are being represented as a digital image. So whatever the, that M cross N size we are considering. And uh, of course, after a certain time, we are, so if we consider the different images, so of course, different image sizes, we will be getting this dimension M and N will differ for the images. So we need to uh, convert it into a fixed size. Either I have, uh, we have converted it as uh, 300 cross 300 or 400 cross, like this, that a fixed size we have converted, then the processing. Is that which dimension M cross N will be the best choice? So whether you have experimented it, if it is not done, then I think it can be one option to find for, out. For our experimental purposes, we have converted into the 256 cross 256 size. 56 versus 256. So it converges uh, after how many iterations? Any 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 idea? Sir, actually here we have just uh, observed the accuracy for different epochs and the threshold value as well as. So for I have tried here for 30 epochs, uh, 25 epochs as well as 30. I have one only one suggestion. So better yes, you choose, if you can choose only 12 plus 12, and then if you find any mass there, then you consider it and otherwise is reject this okay so basically it will be easier to study that whether the 2 cross 12 plus 12 or 16 plus 16 can converge or not so i think it is uh, it is very difficult to explain that if it is 256 versus 256 whether it will converge or it will it will not convert very difficult to conclude Sir, actually, my purpose was not to that to just to identify the area of uh, infection or the uh, where the abnormal cell has uh, developed. Ultimately, CA will give you some output or indication that okay, there is a mass there. So that means if you have to settle to a, to a configuration, okay. Okay. So then we consider that when we will identify okay this config for. Configuration is the final one. Now we can conclude. Okay, sir. So I will study on this definitely. Otherwise, you cannot conclude. That means where, how you are getting the uh, what is called the mass. So I have doubt that you will be getting such an exact mass because CA is not a good classifier. Okay. You have, so we have to. So this was this experimentation is going on. It is almost seventy years old. CA is not a good classifier. Okay, sir. I will take care of the issue also. Yeah, just to extend uh, the comments, what I, if I have understood correctly, so it, it depends on the size of the uh, of this M cross N, right? Always the evolutions, evolutions. Uh, yeah, yeah. It depends on the size. A, any arbitrary M and N. Uh, so if we have to depend on the some characteristics of the ca yes, so it, it should be dependent on m and n right either you can fix that okay we have uh, we have experimented there are simulation lots of simulation and this dimension is more or less giving the correct results so i am not uh, considering covid 19 you know it is very difficult because uh, it depends on the data like you know uh, have you got the uh, patient data of COVID-19? From Kaggle only. But anyway, so it so it is very difficult to conclude because this was in experimental yes, stage. Yes, sir. Okay. This okay, so the, a... uh, you should not be bothered about that. Yes, but the experimentation with CA as, CA as a classifier, so I think uh, people working in this field, they will uh, they will put some doubt that it was it, it was experimented if ca is a good classifier then you know ca is a high speed computation okay so everybody will accept it yes sir so if there is no other question if whether question any question any other question please offline or online yes thank you 
Hello, Rupasri. Have you checked about the running time of your algorithm and have you compared it with the other existing? Hello. Her computation time? Yes. yes. Yes, madam. I have checked and it is much faster than the uh, other conventional methods. Okay. And in your case, the CA rules are configured dynamically based on the configuration. Uh, How the rules are being configured? Uh, the rules are configured in sense of that, uh, as, as Sar was asking about that one. Ma'am, uh, there I have uh, that uh, exhaustively I was trying that which rules will be appropriate for the for which images. For actually, first I have done applied this on individual images. Okay. Later I have further proceeded for the image set. So there I found that, uh, as I mentioned, that rule 25 and uh, rule 9 also there I have applied and uh, just uh, for the checking purposes there I have seen. And then finally that uh, for further performing the neighborhood operations, there we got this result. Okay. And have you, uh, you have mentioned the different age detection operators. Uh, you have mentioned Sovel, Pre, which yes, can yes. He, uh, have you, uh, How many operators you considered for comparison? For here, I have considered only three conventional uh, operators for the age detection. Okay. Sovel, Pre, Wit, and Canny. Okay. Thank you, madam. So just in continuation, uh, you are referring the rules 925. I was trying to understand from you the how the 25 or 9 naming rules are coming out. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, so if, if there are no other questions, yes, please. Hello, ma'am. Uh, I'm not much acquainted with the CA concept, but I work on classification, image classification domain. Um, you just uh, told that uh, you used CA as it is faster than the AI or ML method. Can you give us any insight that how? No, no. Uh, uh, my point of view was not that. Actually, we know that for making it automated, all of you know that we need to uh, train the entire image set or data set so that uh, automatically we can uh, predict the accuracy or can detect it. So in that part, by perspective, what I have done that uh, CA based technique I have applied for the segmentation. And with that uh, approach or technique, I have made one new image form, I mean image set. And there, uh, the existing that uh, AI, ML, whatever the techniques are already have shown here, the three uh, models I have shown here. So I have trained the data with image that with those algorithms. As it has not improved the accuracy percentage in a good extent. Yes, that I have shown that uh, with uh, this segmentation technique, what the image set I have prepared, that was uh, giving us a better accuracy than the, uh, if I am not transforming the image, just taking the raw image set, if I am training it with the VGG or reset or this thing, so there I have shown the output, outcome, what are the uh, differences in accuracy we are but getting. as Kamalika ma'am already said, if it's under 95%, we can't like really say that it's a very good model. So in that case, if we are uh, opting to use CA, we must have some extraordinary advantage over the other available AI or Yes, of course, of course, of course, of course. Right. Actually, the thing is that uh, basically these things are coming depending on your image quality as well as how much noise is there. These things are also to be considered for getting the accuracy. So uh, for, for that purpose, we need to uh, go for the pre-processing part uh, very carefully. We need to take care of that. So actually, this uh, what the comparison here I have shown here, that is only just uh, the same database data set I have considered for the segmentation and without segmentation. This much is the main uh, focus here. But if I go for the, uh, maybe that if I am uh, for some other set, it may be that what the without segmentation I have shown, that is VGG applied has been applied for the entire image set. There it is producing this 81%, right? Why should I prefer to use your method over the uh, conventional AI or ML method? Um, what's the advantage? It's no, just actually the comparison is not the uh, my proposed CA based method and the AI ML method. AI ML method is my further extension work where, where what I have used for getting make it, make it automated prediction or correction. I mean, sorry, not correction, that automatic detection or prediction. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks, ma'am, for clarifying. Uh, so from my understanding you use ca for image segmentation okay. exactly there are different techniques for image segmentation yes did you check with that part yes that uh, 
watershed just one method i have mentioned here watershed uh, we know that very that is very conventional method for uh, segmentation so i have compared only one method no another i have here as a result i have only shown the watershed but region growing or region splitting considering that also i have seen that here it was uh, producing better result that already you have seen that only that portion has been uh, uh, highlighted in this uh, technique okay and what is the size of your data set size of data set it was around 750 images were there 750 yes okay so you were only use kaggle data set not ml repository uh, not yet not okay. yet okay thank you hello so uh, if that is no other question so i uh, thank you rupashri for your talk so uh, please accept this thank you So, uh, what I see in my the lot, the next presentation entitled Rules LPQ by Aith Sadi Nasima. I hope it, it must be online. The presenter is Aith Sadi Nasima. Hello. 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 Uh, uh, do you see my screen? Hello. Okay. Uh, do you hear me? Uh, then good, uh, good afternoon everyone and I would thank at the beginning the organizer for the invitation. My talk is about dynamical properties of the rules LPQ. Then let's start with some basic definition of this kind of dynamical system. Uh, a discrete kind of dynamical system is a couple XF where X is a compact metric space and F is a continuous self map. You can think of F as a way to move point inside the space X. And the orbit, of a, the orbit of a point X0 is the set of all iterations of the point X0 under the application of our continuous function F. There is a natural way to connect topological dynamics to symbolic dynamics using partition and cover. And let XF be a discrete dynamical system and consider a partition P over our space X. And let P be the encoding application defined as follows. For example, let's partitionate our space into three parts. P0 encoded by 0, P1 encoded by 1, and P2 encoded by 2. Then the orbit of the point X0 can be encoded into a B-infinite sequence uh, by, uh, by the following way. Here, our initial point X0 is in, P, in P0, then we put P0 0. 0. The first iteration of the point X0 is in P1, then we put 0 or 1. The second iteration is in P2, then we put 0 or 2, and so on. At the left of the dot, we do the same thing to the reciprocal images of the point X0. Here, as you see, there is a 1, then what means that the, the, the first reciprocal image of the point X0 must be in P1. And then, the orbit of the point X0 is encoded into a infinite sequence of 0, 1, and 2. And the space, the, the space of all the, the infinite sequences that we can construct over some alphabet A is called the symbolic space, and it's denoted by A to the power of Z. Let's take, for example, the binary power space. Here, our alphabet is equal to zero one, and the element of this space are all the, the infinite sequences that we can construct just by using one and two. Now we define what the cellular automaton, a cellular automaton F is an application of um, symbolic space AZ to itself, where the image of any point X is obtained component by component. 
For example, the image of X by the cellular automaton F at the position I is obtained by applying the associated local rule to the A limit of X between the position I plus M and the position I plus A, where I and M are two integers and the maximum of these two integers is called the radius of the cellular automaton. When we give some definitions, a cellular automaton F is mixing if we have for any two opens U and V, there exists an integer and zero such that for any integer greater than and zero, we have the nth iterate of U intersect with V is not empty. And a cellular automaton is transitive if we have for any two opens U and V, there exists at least one integer N such that this intersection is not empty. Uh, say the automaton F is weakly mixing if we have F product F is transitive. Clearly, we have if say the automaton is mixing, then it will be weakly mixing and then it will be transitive by definition. We give an example of a cellular automaton which is the Bernoulli shift. Then the Bernoulli shift is a cellular automaton defined by some symbolic space A to the power of Z where for any point x from the sample x space, its image by sigma is obtained just by shifting the element of x to the left. This system is mixing, then is transitive. Now, in this communication, we are interested in the family of cellular automata defined as follows. As uh, it's good to notice that the, the radius of this family of cellular automata is one, which means that to get the image of x at the position i by the rule LPQ, just we need the element of x between, uh, at the position i and at the position i plus one. Our motivation to study this family of cellular automata is the following. We have for any cellular automaton f, f is mixing, then it is, will be weakly mixing, then it will be transitive. Motetu showed that if a cellular automaton is transitive, then it will be weakly mixing. Then our initial question was if there is some values of P and Q such that the, the cellular automaton L P Q can be transit can be transitive without being mixing. Unfortunately, the answer is not, and in the following we will uh, show some properties of the this family of cellular automaton and in particular show that they are mixing. We have this first, this first property is that if we have all prime factor of P, or prime factor of Q, and P is the division of Q, then the associated rules express the multiplication by P in base Q. We give you a first proposition that said that the cellular automata LPQ are obtained from the dynamical system PX mod 1, defined on the unit interval. To prove that, that Take x be operated from 0 on right and in base q as follows. And we multiply x by p and express pxi as the result of the remainder of the Euclidean division of pxi over q, where, which can be written like this, where ti and ri are defined as follows. We simplify this sum and we apply mod 1 and we will get this last equality which proves that the rules LPQ are obtained from the dynamical system PX mod 1. Now, we give this, this equality which presents the case iterate of the rule LPQ for any point X from Q to the power of Z and for any values of P and Q and for any iterate K, where K is just an integer. This equality can be simplified to this one. Just there, if we have Q is a pure power of P, then this equality can be simplified to this one. And this, this formula is exactly equal to Xi plus 1. We will not prove that because just it's uh, quite simple, just we need to do some basic calculus and then we will get these formulas. And by this equality, we have L, the case iterate of L, the Q, is at the position I is equal to Xi plus 1, which proves that the root L, the Q are the square root of the Bernoulli shift when Q is a pure power of P. And then, as the, there are the square root of the Bernoulli shift when Q is pure is a pure power of P, then they are mixing. Then, uh, but there we show that if Q is a pure power of P, then this will are square root of the Bernoulli shift. This is not always true for the other's value of P and Q, such that if we have 
if we never q is not a pure power of p, then the associated rule cannot be the square root of the Bernoulli sheet. And for that, just to prove that, just we need to take uh, consider to consider a particular point x, which have just one one at the position i zero and zero other ones. Then just to calculate the nth iteration of the, uh, the, uh, of the rules and take you at this particular point, and then we will get we will be, get p n mod we will get p n mod q, which is differ, different from zero by hypothesis, and that proves that whenever if q is not a pure power of p, then the rules are not the square root of the Bernoulli sheet. Now we present the notion of closeness of a pseudo automata. And then we have two point x and y are, uh, are left asymptotic if they exist if they share the same part from the net. Otherwise, if there exists an integer n such that x and y are equal from minus infinity to the integer one. A Sela automaton f is uh, is left closing if we have for any two distinct left asymptotic point x and y, their image by the Sela automaton are different. And similarly, we will uh, define uh, two point x and y are right asymptotic if there exists an integer such that x and y are equal from the n to minus to infinity. And the Sela automaton f is right closing if we have for any two distinct right asymptotic point x and y, we have f of x is different from f y. And the Sela automaton f is open if it is right and right closing. And in this proposition, we will uh, show we will show that if Q is a pure power of P, then the associated rules are open. Then the let us show that the rules LPQ are left closing. Similarly, one can prove that they are right closing. And then let take X and Y are uh, the two left asymptotic point and suppose that they are different just at the position and and we assume that they are imaged by the root LPQ are or then, if never we have the, the, image, the, the image of x by the rule LPQ at the position n minus 1 is equal to the image of y by this rule at the same position n minus 1, then the component xn and yn have to belong into the one of the following three sets. Or in H3, in the H sets, we have, we will have the image of x and y will be different at the position uh, at the position n, which proves that these rules are left closing. And similarly, we can prove that they are uh, right closing. And then, if q is a pure power of p, then the rules at pq are open. But this is not always true for the also the other values of p and q because if we have we take there an example where we take p is equal to three and q is equal to seven and we consider this two two point x and y which as we see there they are left asymptotic and they are different but they are imaged by the rule l three seven are equal and which means that they are not left closed okay thank you for your attention Hello, thank you, Nasima, for your presentation. A few observations are like this. Even any references? How is it that uh, there, there are no references? Uh, just, uh, on, I have to say, when I just start, I did this just like this. It was my first question, and just it was just a simple uh, calculus. Then that's why. Nasima. Yes. Nasima, noise is coming from your end. Please no, take care. Hello, uh, I, I, I was trying to put that uh, in your presentation, there is no references. Yes, because uh, I said that this was my, it was the, the first work that I did, and it was just basics on dynamical systems, uh, that's it. Very, very interesting. And
and exciting theoretical results. But I yeah. would have more excited if you would have included some implementation part. Because it's a technology conference, technology. Uh, I, I, can you repeat the question? Any implementation part of your presentation? Uh -huh. Implementation part of your presentation? Yes. Would be, would be more welcome. Yes. Okay. 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 Is there any other question or opinion offline or online? Okay, then I, I call it uh, that uh, your presentation is over. Thank you, Nasim. Okay, thank you. So, my next presentation entitled Strictly. I'm sorry. Periodic points. Strictly periodic points of cellular automata with almost equicontinuous points by Nak Nakira Alawa. Alawa, Nakira Alawa, please present your items. Yes, sir. Good afternoon. Just a few moments to partage my slides. Okay. Hello? Can you see my slides? No, not yet. Not yet. Uh, probably your screen we can see, but PPT not yet seen. So would you please uh, close your presentation altogether and then again start, restart? Uh, sorry? So uh, we are unable to see your PPTs. Thank <laughs> you. 
يخي مين 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 Nakira, what you can do, you may try in this way, you can just stop presenting. Then you again uh, start presenting your screen. Can you hear us? Nakira, can you hear us? We can't hear you. Yeah. Well, yeah, now it's coming. Hello? Yeah. Uh, so you see uh, my uh, slides? Yes. Right now. Yes. Okay. Uh, sorry for be later. So first, I would like to thank to thank the organizers please, for uh, full screen, please full screen, full screen. Okay. Is it okay? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So first, I would like to thank organizers for the invitation. My talk is about strictly periodic points of cellular automata with almost equicontinuous point. Cellular automata are symbolic dynamical systems with very rich and diverse behavior. Hadlon was among the first to study cellular automata from the perspective of symbolic dynamical system. He studied them as morphism of the shift. Later, Gilman proposed a classification of one-dimensional cellular automata. He introduced the concept of measurable equicontinuous point and of measurable expensivity. Let's start with a brief symbolic uh, system reminder. Let A be a finite set with at least two elements called an alphabet and a U word, uh, which is a sequence of uh, letters in A within uh, his length is equal to the number of the letters. We denote by AZ the set of B infinite sequences. Endowed with the product topology, the set AZ is a compact metric space. The distance between two points is given by is equal to two to the power minus I, or I is the first uh, position where uh, the two points are different. Uh, formally, a couple AZF is a cellular automaton if there exists an integer R and a map F uh, such that the, uh, the image of any point in the position I is equal by uh, the cellular automata F is equal to the hurry image with uh, the small, uh, the small, uh, the small. Happen. The most uh, example, the most known example of cellular automata is the Bernoulli shift or the shift, which consists uh, to to shift all letters of the po uh, point. point of the cellular automaton if there exists an integer such that uh, the path image or iterate of x is equal to x is set spatially periodic if it's uh, periodic for the shift by strictly temporally periodic point of cellular automaton we mean uh, the point which are uh, strictly temporally periodic but not spatially periodic in other words, uh, points which are only 
periodic under the, uh, the action of cellular automata, but not under the action of the shift. As I said in the beginning, considering a Bernoulli measure mu, Gilman introduced the concept of measurable equicontinuous point and uh, of measurable uh, expansivity. Uh, Gilman's division of cellular automata into classes into classes is based on the analysis of the following sets. So for any integer n and the point x we denote by C n, the set of all point of all points that uh, agree with x in uh, or which are uh, equal to x in the interval minus n and n. And by Bn the x by Bn x the set of points such are uh, such uh, all iterates her iterates agree with those of x in the interval minus n or n uh, to n if we visualize if we visualize the behavior of x as an array then bn is the set of all points those behavior agree with those of x in the infinite vertical strip under the interval minus n and n as we can see in the figure attached So, considering an automata and cellular automata, f is set equicontinuous at point. If uh, for any point closed than x, all their iterates will be closed, then iterates of those of x for all uh, n integer n. A point x is set the mu almost equicontinuous. If for all m integer m one has the measure of cnx cross Bmx near the infinity is equal to the measure of Cnx. F is almost expensive if there exists a strictly positive integer such that for all points we have the mu, the measure of Bmx is equal to zero. Notice that the existence of a mu almost equicontinuous point is characterized by the existence of the of a set Bnx with a measure strictly positive. So Gilman shows that for, uh, any cellular automata belongs, belongs to one of the following classes. In the first class, we found cellular automata, those are equicontinuous at some x. In the second class, we found uh, cellular automata that are almost equicontinuous at some x almost equicontinuous at some x but not the which are not in the first class in the third uh, class we found uh, expensive almost expensive cellular automata let's remind the Poincaré recurrence theorem so considering any measurable dynamical system and uh, a measurable set with strictly positive measure a then almost all point of A return in A in infinite time. In other words, uh, for any, where, any point of A, there exists an integer n such that the nth iterate of uh, point x will be uh, will belong to A almost everywhere. In this, in this work, we extend the work of uh, Pierre Delina, the result of Pierre Delina and the others, about the strictly temporally periodic points, they showed using topological tools that considering any surjective cellular automata, if F has equicontinuous point, then the set of strictly temporally periodic points of F is dense. So we consider a cellular automata and mu and F invariant and shift ergodic measure. We show that if F has almost equicontinuous point, then the set of strictly temporally periodic point of F is dense in the topological support of mu. To prove this, let's R be the radius of the cellular automaton and Z uh, uh, mu almost equicontinuous. So, uh, like I said uh, previously, <clears throat> there will be there will exist there exists. Uh, a set BRZ with strictly positive measure. The idea is to shift P time this, this set to the, the right side 
and p time to the left side. And let S be the, the set B, BR across sigma minus P uh, of BR. Uh, we suppose that P is strictly greater than 2R plus 1. And since our alphabet A contains at least two elements, so there, will, there exists two different words U and V, which have the same, the same length. Okay, so we will uh, define, let's define the sequence uh, Y by the following. We will show uh, that this sequence will converge to a point uh, which is strictly periodic point, uh, which is a strictly periodic point. Uh, so we define our sequence uh, as, the fo as following. The first titillate of the sequence is equal to W, U, W. And for each new iterate, we just add a UV to the right side and the WV to the left side. As we can see and remark, our sequence will converge by the point which is equal to WV to the infinity and W, U, W and U, W to the infinity. Okay, we show by induction that all elements of our uh, sequence are uh, belong to S and the sequence uh, as I said, is uh, converged to the, the, the point W, uh, uh, Y. And since S is closed, so our point, uh, our limit of uh, the, the limit point of the sequence belongs to S. Or I just remind that S is, uh, is the set BRZ uh, cross sigma minus P of BRZ. And since B uh, is uh, the set is uh, of uh, strictly positive measure. So our set new set S is uh, of strictly positive measure. So if we, ap we apply the Poincaré Lucas theorem, there exists an, a, st a strictly positive integer M and the point X such that FM uh, the nth iterate of X will be equal to X in the interval minus R to R plus P. In the interval minus r to r plus p and as i said in the uh, previously the, all the elements of our uh, our set uh, share the same central coordinates because uh, by definition of the set br it's uh, independent the element her elements are independent from what happens outside of the of the interval uh, of the interval minus r to r plus p so it uh, implies this implies that fm uh, the mth iterate of a of y is equal to uh, the mth iterate of x which is equal to x between minus r to r plus p which is equal to uh y min between minus r to r plus p which is equal to w u w and since our point is uh, of the form W, U, W, W, U, W. It's the, the repetition of W, U, W to the infinity. So we can see, say, that uh, the nth iterate of uh, Y between minus R and plus infinity to plus infinity is equal to Y between minus R to plus infinity. And using the same, uh, using the same argument, we can uh, considering and considering the set, the set S1, which was uh, S1, which is uh, BR cross sigma P of BR, which is equal to WVW, we can deduce that we can deduce that. Fm the nth iterate of y between minus infinity to minus r is equal to uh, y between minus infinity to minus r. It follows so that uh, the nth iterate of y is equal to y. So we can say that uh, y is a temporally periodic point. As I said in the beginning of the proof, u is different than v than v. 
So our point is not a sigma periodic point, and this permits you conclude. This is some references, and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Nakira. Uh, very good presentation. Your assertions you. are quite nice. Main results are quite interesting. So I would have more excited if some implementation parts of the results you would have included for getting the full flavor of cellular automata. In this technology okay. conference, your implementation parts are most welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Any questions from offline or online? Okay, in the event that there is no other question, I must thank you. Your presentation is over. Thank you. Thank you, sir. next presentation scalable circuit design scheme for parallel computing on an asynchronous cellular automaton by zhu and li when zhu and zia li Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Let me introduce myself first. I'm Wen Lu Xu. I'm a doctoral student at the School of Computer Science, Chongqing University, China. The subject of my talk is Scalable Circuit Design Scheme for Parallel Computing. My talk will be in three parts. First, I briefly introduce my First, I briefly introduce the proven computing capabilities of CA. The purpose that ACA also have parallel computing capabilities. And finally, prove that asynchronous models have greater universality than Turing completeness. CA is the basic model of parallel computing which is the basis architecture as a nanos computer. Well, Turing machine is a classical serial computer model. Most of research on computational universality of CA focus on how to configure synchronous or asynchronous logic circuits in the cell space. So as to prove the computational power equivalent to logic circuits or Turing machines. This universal capability is not enough to flag, reflect the intrinsic to reflect the intrinsic characteristics of hyperparallelism of CA. Bank CA have an inherent universality, that is, they can simulate any other synchronous CA. The ability to simulate other CA through spatial temporal adjustment. It is regarded as, uh, as the standard to measure the parallel computing capability of CA. Spatial temporal scaling usually refers to a single cell that mimics the other cells with multiple cells connected together. The most intrinsic characteristics of cellular automata are emergence and hyperparallelism, 
which is an important symbol to distinguish CA from other general computing models. Therefore, the inherent universality of CA should not only be limited to limited to the Turing machine, logic circuit, and other general models, but also reflect its ultra-parallel computing capability. Referring to synchronous CA, the intrinsic universality of a synchronous CA should include the computing power to effectively simulate other gen general purpose CA. How to establish the formal definition of the two kinds of simulation is also one of our research topics. According to the multi-layer organization structure of natural life, the ACA is divided into regional blocks and the cells of each regional block interact with each other and work together to simulate the state changes so as to achieve super so as to achieve super polar computing. To verify, to verify the intrinsic parallelism of ACA, firstly, an efficient simulation of method for synchronous CA and a synchronous CA is designed to simulate complex CA. In order to reduce the complexity required by simulation, an effective method is to gather, to gather multiple cells together to complete the state transition through the interaction between cells. The definition of this simulation process contains two core ideas. Imitating the homogenism of Natural life, the ACA space is divided into regions, and the cells in each region block communicate with each other and work together to carry out the state transition. An effective machinism was developed to regulate the interaction and the mutual restriction between adjacent regions so that other Complex evolution processes of CA could emerge in all regions, and the parallel computing capability of the two models was proved to be equivalent. To design a circuit simulating synchronous CA, it is necessary to add additional some modules to the circuit module so that signal can be transmitted between adjacent modules. In contrast, circuits that mimic other ACA allow signals to be exchanged between modules according to a signal's protocols without the need to control the operation of adjacent cells, thus simplifying the function of modules and the way they are weird. Obviously, each block BXH forms a hyper rectangle in the cell space. X is the lowest point in the block. Moreover, uh, each partition consists of the lowest points of infinitely many H blocks, which divide the entire cell space into identical hyperrectangular, which divide the entire cell space into identical hyperrectangular rectangular block without overlapping, such that every cell in ZD lies in one and exactly one block. 
Omega H H Q be the site of all states of H block. The bijective function pi enables the partition of alpha ACA's cell space into identical blocks of cells and mapping each block uniquely to one cell in the synchronous CA. Likewise, the surjective function divides the states of each block in the ACA into disjoint subsets in one-to-one -one correspondence with the set of synchronous CA. Our work mainly uses these two models, PTC and alpha ACA. Their neighborhood shapes are shown in the finger. These are the rules of alpha ACA and the spatial configuration of circuit elements. The simulation of synchronous PTCA is completed by dividing the cell space into blocks and then embedding delay insensitive circuits into each cell block. In addition, the delay insensitive circuit in each cell block interconnects with other circuits in the adjacent cell block. That is, that is the, the effective input and output of the signal on the asynchronous circuit corresponding to a, a state change of the cell block in the synchronous CA. And a synchronizer is used between the cell blocks in the cell block to control the circuit to synchronize the input of a set of signals. The partial configurations for realizing, realizing of the signal transmission in PTCA. Finger 2 is the DI circle implanting the above configuration, which is composed by the UT and the DT modules, along with the synchronizer for clarity. The UT module carrying a signal is highlighted with gray. Based on the DI module, the DI circuit is reconstructed to simulate the PTCA. Each UT or DT module in the circuit acts as a cell, as a cell and is interconnected with three DT or UT modules. The structure of the entire circuit a circuit is structured and unified on a macro level and resembles the cellular spatial configurations of PTCA. In addition, each pair of interconnected UT and DT modules separately simulates two cells adjacent to each other and the synchronizers control the input and output signals in a circuit module. In fact, UT or duty remains inactive, remains inactive until signals are received from all adjacent DT modules. Therefore, each UT and the DT module can accurately simulate the state transition of the corresponding cell, and no module can perform the state transition more than once before its neighbor. Due to the simplicity in the neighborhood of the RTCA, less interconnecting any pair of UT and DT modules do not cross each other. 
This feature may enable the embedding the circuit into the alpha ACA to simulate PTCA. On the other hand, embedding the circuit need, need to construct all DI modules using the primitives. This is this is a two bit encode logic circuit module. It is designed with multiple DI circuits and embedded into a synchronous CA. Figure one is a token arriving on each of input lines. They are proper they are processed and result in a token on output lines. 1 1 1 0 or 0 1 or 0 0. A token is assigned in a once. A token, um, figure 2 uh, is a token assigned in a once on, on input line of the tree T5, which will pan on the line until the tree receives a token from input line. The case for the token assigned on an uh, input line of trio T4 is similar. Roughly speaking, the trio T1 and the T2 are mainly used to accomplish, accomplish the encoding task of two bit encoder, while trio T3 and the T4 are used to avoid the collision of two tokens. If Implementation of two-bit encoder into ACA in accordance with the circuit scheme in Finger 2. As two-bit encoder is simply a sub-circuit of the two-bit encoder, construction of as two-bit encoder using trio, mode, and fork and fork elements which can be obtained by removing the trio T3 and the T4 from the construction of two-bit encoder. Based on the two-bit encoder, S2-bit encoder, multifold and the trio elements, it is possible to construct the three-bit encoder, which takes eight output lines in one-to-one -one with combinations of three binary numbers. This module can virtually serve as the core component, component of UT and DT modules. Because it, its output lines uniquely corresponding to each valid set of input tokens. As a result, it turned out to be able to use the fork to duplicate a token arriving on any output line of the 3-bit encoder, followed by redirecting all tokens where the merge to corresponding output lines of a uh, uh, UT or DT. Based on all based on all const constructions, it turned out to be able to construct a, a near-restricted DS circuit implanting the PTCA where, where the mode fork and the trio elements, thereby thereby no need of the arbitrary element sequencer. Generally, all asynchronous circuits have crossover lines, so this work needs to make a spatial layout of circuit components so that there is a time difference when signals appear at crucial points, so as to ensure that two signals will not arrive at the same time. Due to this special design layout of the circuits as described above, thus it turned out to be able to lay out all constructions on the cell spins of PTCA straightforward in accordance with their circuit 
game is. This is being easily achieved via mapping the circuit layout onto the cell spins of ACA. As a result, ACA, a synchronous satellite mental model, has universal computing capacity that is equivalent to the synchronous PTCA with intrinsic universality. Well, I will cover the point that I needed to present today. Thanks for your listening.